All right, let's do our Lab 4 generalization assignment. So we've got five different problems here. I'm going to copy these and I'm going to switch over to my stats lab project. Quickly also make a copy of Lab 3 and call it Lab 4. And I'm just going to delete all the previous stuff pop in our problems for lab four, and I'm just gonna format this really quick. All right, I got it formatted. I'm gonna knit this just to take a look. We've got our five problems, so let's get started on the first problem. The first problem is to estimate letter occurrence probabilities of all 26 letters in English by measuring a paragraph of English text from Wikipedia. And there's a hint to use str split uh, in order to do this. And if we go back to the website, uh, you can see the example of that hint there. But we need to go to Wikipedia first. So here we go. Just head over there and I'll click English. Let's just find a random article. Here's, here's one. Um, and here's a paragraph. I could just copy this. That's a paragraph from Wikipedia. Perfect. Now, Oops, that's the wrong R Studio. I need to put this into a variable. I'm going to call it Wikipedia. And I'll use quotes and just copy everything into that variable. So now when I press play, we've got a, a variable called a big long string here called Wikipedia. Now my goal is to break this down into individual letters. And we can do that using str split. This will take a vector as an input and we get to define how we're going to split this up. And uh, I'm gonna actually split it by, this is an empty string. We've got two quotes and nothing in it. Let's just, I'll just show you what happens if we split it by a space. If we do that, we can take a look at what's in letters. Actually, this creates a list. And inside of here, we'll see that we've split that paragraph by spaces. And so it gives us the words, which are the things in between spaces. So if I was to print this out here, we'd see all the spaces. Uh, but it, uh, I don't want to do that. I want to do this with out a space in there. And that's like splitting between every single character, including the space, which is a character. So if we do that now, we're going to get all of our individual letters. Now what I'd like to do is use the table function to calculate the occurrence of every single letter in here. And we can do it just like this. So that's pretty convenient. Um, notice though, the class of letters, it's called a list. Um, and I'm going to use the unlist function. Uh, and now the letters variable is a character vector, which is easier to work with. Sometimes you'll use a function in R, for example, like the str split function, and it will produce an output that you might not be expecting in this case. I was expecting a character vector. So I uh, converted uh, that to a character vector using the unlist function. And table still works the same. It counts up all of the occurrences of each of the different characters in here. Now the question was, asking about the letter occurrence probabilities of all 26 letters in English. And we have some letters in here and we're missing a Z it looks like. And also we have lowercase and uppercase. There's a function called two dot two lower, all one word. Let's use that function and see what happens. So 
So now, if we look through all of the letters, we've converted them to lowercase. And when, when we put lowercase in here now, we will have our letters with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, L, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and so Z occurs zero times. Um, if you don't happen to sample a particular letter in your paragraph, that's okay. If you remember also, uh, actually, I'm gonna go, I've, I've messed some things up here because If you remember, there is a default in R called letters. And I'm going to, I need to use that in a moment here. So what I'm going to do is Wikipedia, I'm going to rename this first variable Wikipedia letters. And you'll see why in a moment. So we've got Wikipedia letters, we've got lowercase, we've got table lowercase, so it all works. I'm going to uh, clear the workspace. So I've cleared all these things. Now remember, if you type letters in R, you're going to get all of the letters of the alphabet. Previously, when I defined this first variable this way using the word letters, I erased that and populated it with the letters from the Wikipedia article. But I want to use these things because if we take a look at these three commands, oops, let's do all of these. So we've got uh, Wikipedia letters contains the different letters in uh, that have been occur in uh, this paragraph here. Lowercase contains the lowercase version of all of those letters, and table lowercase con contains counts. Now this table has things additional to letters. It has spaces, punctuation, and numbers, because those things occurred in this paragraph. What I'm interested in is only the letters, so I'd like to restrict this data to only containing the letter information. Let's see if we can do that. First, I'm going to store the results in uh, a, a variable called letter counts. Now, letter counts is a particular kind of thing. It is a table. I would like to convert it first to a data frame. I've done that here using this line. So here, we use the table function and we put the result in the variable letter counts. And at this point, letter counts is a table. In the next line, we, we can use as.dataframe or I think we can just use data frame. Um, let's find out actually. And we're putting into the function the, the variable letter count, what's can contains the table, and if we put it uh, in the data frame function, it will convert it to a data frame. And if we then ask for the class, it will say data frame. Now I'm doing that because the, the table uh, is a little odd in terms of how you would deal with it. And we're going to use tidyverse style here in order to, what's our goal? Our goal is to limit this table to only letters in the alphabet and not these additional aspects. So let's see if we can do that. Take our letter counts, first load the, the dplyr library. We're gonna put this into a pipe and we are going to filter the uh, lowercase column that has all the names, filter, lowercase, and we want it to equal letters. That is, 
we want to keep anything that is the same as the values in the letters variable. So let's see what happens if we run this. Oh, we've got an error. That's right, I made a mistake. And so in order to accomplish this, we're gonna to have to use a new kind of syntax that I haven't talked about yet. And it looks like this. All right, lowercase is, uh, we're basically asking filter this data frame and look inside of the column lowercase and keep all of the rows where the things in lowercase are in this other variable letters and where all of that is true. So if we do this, uh, we can filter this table, which includes uh, things additional to letter, letter characters. I'm gonna call this final. And let's take a look at final. So here it is, it now contains all the letters we were interested in. Great. So let's do one more thing and calculate the probabilities of all of these letters. And let's add another column to the data frame with the probabilities. So in order to do that, first of all, I wanna find the sum of all of the numbers in the FREQ column. And seven, that sum is 749. I'm just gonna save that as total letters. So there's 749 letters observed in this paragraph. Now what I'd like to do is take this data frame. I want to add a column called probabilities and I want it to equal the freak column divided by the sum, which is the total number of letters. And that didn't work. I think the reason why is I didn't make this variable total letters. So let's try this again. There we go. So there we have it. We now have a data frame with all of the observed letter frequencies and probabilities. So I'm gonna use knitter cable to print that out. And let's knit that. Oh, I need two colons. And we've put our answer in here and, and there we have it. Problem one solved. Number two, the problem number two is to generate random strings of letters sampled from a distribution where letter occurrence probability is the same as natural English. You can use letter probabilities from a Wikipedia article or use your own estimates from the previous question. So we just made some here and let's use those. They are currently in the final uh, data frame. So we're gonna use these probabilities right here. First of all, I'm going to make a variable called test sample and show you how easy this is to get set up in a kind of simple way here. So what I wanna sample from are the letters in final lower case, that is this column right here. I want to sample from those. I want to say replace equals true. And I want to set the prob 
to final probabilities. And I kind of forgot one thing about the sample function, which is how many to sample. So just to be clear, x, the things that we're sampling, are in the lowercase part, the lowercase column of the final data frame. Size is how many things to sample. So I could say five here. And what we'll do is produce a five letter word or a five letter string, I-N-R-V-M in this case. Every time we do this, we're gonna get uh, a different random string. I wonder if we, just to see, let's make one with size three int. Well, that's short for integer. I'm, I was just gonna kind of quickly see if we're gonna make any English words here. It's, so oh, we made EPA. Well, it's was a word. So just by randomly sampling letters um, with the probabilities of English, we were able to create a few random words here. All right, let's go back to the, uh, the previous part of the lab here and copy some code that we used to generate random letter strings before and use that code here to do it again, except um, this time we'll be using our letters sampled with probabilities from natural English. So. Basically, we can pop in final lowercase for the letters here, and we can add prob here, and then we can delete this top part. So now my letters is being sampled from the data frame and its probabilities, and then we use these various methods to create a bunch of random strings. So there we have it. Here are uh, some more English-like random letter strings. And what you should see here is that letters that occur frequently in English are occurring frequently in these random letter strings, more frequently than the low frequency letters. So that's problem two. On to problem three. This is very similar to something we just did in the lab. I'm gonna add our, our code chunk. We're gonna generate a random walk of 10,000 steps. So just to talk about a random walk here and look up in the top right-hand corner, uh, in the random walk process, you start at zero, and we're basically imagining kind of infinite staircase. At each step, you flip a coin and if you get heads, let's say I got a heads on my first step, you go up one stair. Um, so you'd be on stair number one. And then on your next step, you flip a coin again. And if you get heads, you go up. And if you get tails, you go down. So let's say I got heads again. So you go up one. Now you'd be on stair number two. Let's say you flip the coin again. You got a tail. So this time you go down one. And you're back on step one. Let's say you got tails again. So now you're on step zero. Let's say you got tails again. So now you're on step minus one. And maybe you get another tails. Wow, you're just getting so many tails. So you go to minus two. And maybe you get a heads again. So you go minus one. And then another head. So you're back at zero. And with this random walk, you're kind of just randomly going up or down your stairs, um, depending on what the coin flip is. So that's a random walk process. And we are going to simulate that in R. And your goal is to do 10,000 steps and have a vector, at least a vector that would record all of the steps that you're on, including, so that is uh, the, the step number for each of those steps. There's a couple of ways we could go about doing this. Um, let's do it inside of a loop. And I'm going to create a variable called step. And it's gonna be an empty vector. 
And let's make a loop go from one to 10,000 because we're going to take 10,000 steps. So I in one to 10,000. We need a coin, coin flip. And um, we could use something like this where one is a heads. Um, well, actually, let's, let's do one or negative one. So we're either going to go plus one or we're going to go negative one. And that we can use in a convenient way, we'll see. We're going to do one. So we're going to sample one value from, from this. And you can see that every time I do this, we're going to get a one or a negative one. So this is like a way to make a decision about what, what we're going to do. We're either going to go up one or down one. And so for each value and step, we're going to take step at position I, which is whatever our current position is. And I guess we should have a start with a zero here. So let's give it a zero. And we're going to take that current value and we're going to add whatever our coin flip is. So if we do this, we should see, and I'm still getting this little thing here. I've messed up something possibly. I'm not sure what it is. Let's press play, see if it works. It does work. I'm not sure why that's happening. All right, I got rid of that. I just um, pressed enter, made sure this was uh, aligned with with this part. And if I press play now, what we can see is that we have a new variable called step. Oh, and it has negative one in it and then a bunch of numbers that are NA. So I've done something wrong. Great. All right, let's walk through what mistake I made. Consider our situation. We have a variable called step and it's got one thing in it, and um, there's no second thing in it, right? In the first position, uh, in the first position, there is a zero. So when i is one in the loop, uh, this will work. Step at position one is a zero. We flip our coin, so coin flip happens to be a negative one here, and then we can do something like add step i, which is a zero plus coin flip. And that gives us a negative one. And what we've done actually is assigned that into, back into the ith position. In some sense, we should assign it into this position, which is the next one. If we're starting at zero, we're gonna say, yep, that's our first position. Well, when we flip a coin and we take a step, uh, that's the next position in our step vector. So let's see if this works. Let's take a look at step. And there we've got some of the values that I was looking to see. And we're asked to plot the first 1,000 steps. We can do that. We can say step one to 1,000. Let's take a look. Press play, and there we go. So look at this random walk. Uh, it started off at zero, and it just kind of went negative. So we're, we've, we're kind of bouncing around in here, and we did it. We made this random walk, and we plotted the first 1,000 steps. So problem four is to ask the question, what was the most positive and the most negative step reached out of 10,000? So we need to go back and we're going to look at the values in our step variable. Now, out of curiosity, I'm just going to take a look and see what happened the whole way through. So now we're going to look at all 10,000. So eventually, it looks like we did go above zero. And so this is looks like our biggest positive value to around a 20. And this is our biggest negative value. 
around a minus 60. And of course, every time we do this, we're going to get different results, right? If I press play up here again, we're going to see a different kind of random walk. And this one looks like it's going up and up and up and up. Uh, and that's what we were seeing for the first thousand, up and up and up and up. And here our minimum value was probably like a negative 19 or something like that. And our positive value that's the biggest is a 6, 60, 70, something like that. But to find these, all we need to do is find the max, which will give us our biggest positive value, and the minimum, which will give us our smallest value. So there, that's it. We've solved the problem. We just needed to figure out the minimum and the maximum. Now let's go on to problem five. Problem five is a little bit more involved. We're going to be asking, again, questions about the contents of the step variable. And our, and our question here is, what was the longest run of steps where all the steps were positive numbers? And in our example here, we see uh, that uh, the answer here is five because one, two, three, four, five, these are positive values above zero and there's no other string of f more than five in a row. So the answer here would be five. So we're gonna go into our step variable and try to figure out what the longest sequence of positive values was. I'll direct your attention to the little whiteboard and let's talk about uh, how we might solve this problem. So our random walk is gonna do something like this. And uh, what we wanna do is find out the longest span, like for example here, where all of the values are above zero. So I can just see that in this span, this one is the longest span, these little spans, are, well that one, this is a span of all negative numbers, so that's not what we want. And um, this one's a little bit shorter than that one, and this one's a little bit shorter than that one too. Now, how could we go about doing this? Because our step variable, it has all these values, and the values would be something like, uh, let's we start at zero, um, and then we're gonna have, I don't know, one, two, three, two, one, three, or two, three, four, stuff like this. And then it's going to maybe go three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative one, something like that. So we have a bunches of positive and negative values. Now we could convert all of these values into logical uh, values. For example, what we might want to know is uh, let's let's know if the number is a positive or negative number. So we could convert these into trues if the value is uh, greater than zero, and we can convert them into falses if the value is negative than zero. And then we can count up our sequences of trues in a row. And uh, that's gonna, we're gonna have groups of them. There's gonna be trues, and then there's gonna be groups of falses, and then there's gonna be groups of trues. We can count these up. So that's a three. This one is a one, two, three, four, five. That's a five. We go through our sequence, count them up, and then figure out which one was the longest. So that, we're gonna approach the problem this way here. So the first thing I will do is convert the step variable to a logical. Now what we're going to say is, uh, well, actually, I need to pause and think about this for a moment. All right, I was thinking about it in a silly way. There is a convenient function called sign, and this one returns a vector with the signs of the corresponding elements of X. So let's try this, sign, and we'll put step in there. And we're gonna take a look at what we got. So we've got logical underscore step, and it's now just bunches of ones, 
Uh, it starts off as it, we've got our zero, we've got our negatives. And so it's just basically representing our sequence of steps in terms of the signs of the numbers. And this is great. And what I'm interested in is pretty much going through here and saying, what are the lengths of these sequences? So here we've got a sequence that's all negatives. So looks like there's like a hundred and a bit there. There's a sequence where we went negative for one, went negative for one. Here's a sequence where we went positive for one. Um, looks like here's a sequence where we go positive for, I don't know, 20 or so. And then there's a really long sequence of positives. So we're going to try to count up all of these things. And um, one way to do it would be to loop through every element and uh, count up th these uh, sequences in between the zeros. And we would only, well, we could do that for the negatives and the positives. And then at the end, figure out which one was the largest positive. So let's do it that way. And I'll note before I do this, there's more than one way to solve this problem, uh, but let's do it using a for loop. So we're going to go for i in one to length logical step. And this will allow us to iterate through each of the values here. And we need to now think about what we're going to do. We have to write a little algorithm that takes into account uh, what, what, have, what we should do on each iteration here. That is, um, we need to start counting up our values. And however, every time we come to a zero, we need to reset our counter. So let's think about this a little bit. All right, what I'm going to do is create a empty variable called sequence. And we're going to add a new element to this variable every time we've counted up a sequence. So if I'm looking at the first, I don't know, 100 values of, of step here, whoops, uh, I can see that our first sequence is going to be all of these negative values. Well, there's a whole bunch, they're all negative, so we might have to expand this to see where it's going to end. Yeah. So all of these get into, I think it stops right here. So in between this zero and this zero is our first sequence. So I would count all of that up, how many numbers are in there, and I'm going to store that in our first sequence. And actually, we wanted to look at logical step. So it's all of these negative ones, those ones right here. I'm going to count up all those negative ones, and that will be the length of our first sequence. And, you know, if we just added these things up, we'd get a negative number. It looks like this is our 97th, so we're going to be around 100 and something over here. So our first value in sequence is going to be negative 100 and something. Then we're going to go in here, get to this one. We should get a negative 1 because the length of this sequence is just negative 1. And the length of this one is negative 1. The length of this one is 1. The length of this one is negative 3. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to erase this stuff over here in the whiteboard. And I'm just going to make some notes for myself so we can do some checking as we go. It's good to have some expectations for what should happen. And I'm going to say the first negative number in sequence uh, should be a negative 100-ish, right? And then it's going to be a negative 1, and then a negative 1, and then a 1 and then a negative three, and then a one, and then a negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a negative nine. All right, I'll just leave that there. 
And as we write our little algorithm, we can use it to check our work. So what do we want our algorithm to do? Okay, well, let's type some stuff and see if we can start thinking about it. We're going to go through each of the positions in the logical step variable. And we're going to do some stuff. So what are we going to do? Well, let's say if the variable, that is, if the value in position i of logical step equals 0, let's think about what we're going to do if we get it to a 0. So we'll get to a 0 here, we'll get to a 0 here and here. What I think we should do is um, reset something that we're using to count. Now, we haven't even put that here yet. I'm just thinking ahead. Let's make a counter. And, well, think about this. If I put this in here, inside of my loop, at every iteration, we're going to put a zero into this variable. I don't want to do that. I want to do that. I could do it outside of the loop so that we begin with a counter. It starts at zero. How about we do that? Now, if we ever come across a zero in our sequence, I'm going to put a zero back into the counter as if we're starting again. And otherwise, so this will happen else if, so if we find a zero, if we're at a zero position, we're going to set the, uh, put a zero into counter. Otherwise, so there's only two other possibilities. We're either going to be at a negative one or a positive one. So. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to add to the value of counter the value in position i of logical step. So consider what happens in this loop when i is 1. So let's put a 1 into i. Well, is this true? Yes, that is true. So counter will be assigned a zero. And this won't happen because we uh, because only the first part was true. So then I will become a two. And will this happen? No, that that is false. The position two of logical step is does not equal zero, it equals negative one. So therefore, this will happen. So what is going to happen here? Well, what is the current value of counter? It is a zero. What is the value of logical step? Remember, i is a two. So that value is a negative one. So zero plus negative one is negative one. And that is now being assigned into the value of counter. So counter becomes a negative one. Now, if we move on and make i a 3, uh, then, again, this part won't happen because the third thing here is a negative 1. And this is going to happen again, We're basically incrementing our counter. So let's, um, if we did this, uh, we're going to basically count up the length of the sequence. And every time we get to a zero, we're going to reset the count. Now, is there anything else we'd like to do when we find a zero? So I think what we'd like to do is save the value of the count in our sequence variable. And we could do that right here. Now, one thing that is going on here is uh, we want to save multiple values. So the first one we want to save is negative 100, then negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 3, and so on. 
And there's a couple of different ways we could do that. This one works pretty well, and it's a little funny in some ways. So remember, sequence is defined up here as an empty vector. So right now, it should have a null in it. Now, what we want to do is every time we come across a zero, we're going to add onto that vector the value of counter. And so this will grow the vector. So let's check this out and see what happens if we run this. Now, we should be able to go and look at the value of sequence and see what we've got. So our, the way we did it, we start off with a zero. This puts a zero in there at the beginning. And then we get our negative 111. So we, we thought our first number would be around negative 100. And that's true. And then we get negative 1, negative 1, 1. So that's the same as what we put up in the whiteboard. Then we get negative 3, 1, negative 9, 23, 3,889, and all these other values. So it looks like it worked. And the question was, uh, what was the longest run of steps where all the steps were positive numbers? So we're going to take the max of our sequence variable and we get 3,889. Now, if you happen to get a sequence where there were no positive numbers, uh, you won't be able to answer this question, but you could uh, also report the minimum, which would give you the most negative, the longest negative sequence. So in our case, that was a negative 111. All right, so if I knit everything, I should be able to see that I've answered all my questions and uh, that is the solutions for lab four.